I know you've worked with Dwayne's and a lot of the bigger companies around here. Our sweet spot is probably the 25 to 30 employees, but we've got some that have 90 to 100. It's a varying range, but you're not too small. We got some people who've been with us 20 years and they got three employees and, and that works for their business model and we're there to support them. Right. We treat them right. just like they're 300 people. What is the number one mistake you see small businesses make when they call you to come in and help that you wish that they didn't make? I, th I think the, the most misunderstood part of a business on any level is file storage. People are not backing their files up correctly. They don't know where their files are saved. You go in the office and you're looking for something. Well, I did it in Microsoft Word. I did in Excel. Well, that's not really where the files stored at. Welcome to another episode of Best of Johnston County, brought to you by Breeden Law Office. Our host, Jonathan Breeden, an experienced family lawyer with a deep connection to the community, is ready to take you on a journey through the area that he has called home for over 20 years. Whether it's a deep dive into the love locals have for the county or unraveling the complexities of family law, Best of Johnston County presents an authentic slice of this unique community. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Best of Johnston County podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Breeden, and we have a great guest here today in my friend, one of my very best friends, Woody Bailey, owner of Woody's Computing Services here in Johnston County. Welcome to the show, Woody. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. This is, uh, I've been looking forward to this. If you and I start talking, it might be an hour, an hour and a half later. So we're going to try to keep it to a, a reasonable time length uh, about what's going on. So I guess introduce yourself to the audience. Um, uh, I know you're from Johnston County. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, I, I'm born and bred here, born in Wilson County, actually, but lived in Johnston County around Stansel's Chapel my whole life. Now I'm out in the Flowers Plantation community, uh, but been here, went to NC State, you know, go Wolfpack, uh, came back here, wanted to have my roots here, small, small town feel, great place to raise a family close to my uh, family as well. So we, we love Johnston County. Well, that's awesome. That's, all, that's awesome. Yeah, I know. And uh, I know um, you, uh, when you left NC State, uh, you came back and you, you you took some classes at Johnston Community College. Sure, sure. Yeah, did a little bit of uh, networking classes there, uh, kind of just expanding the horizons, you know, different, different fields are good to know. Right, right. And then um, somewhere along that way, I think you started Woody's Computing. Yeah, we, you know, I worked at IBM about eight years as a project manager, straight out of state, even during uh, my time at state. And it was just, it was an easy fit to, I saw a void in the community for small businesses that couldn't afford their own IT person. I found that they needed someone to help them along and not only just buy computers and laptops, but email hosting and websites and consulting on how technology can impact their office, how they can go paperless. And so I saw that need and I just kind of, after after eight years of doing it part-time, went out full-time. Yeah, it's 21 years ago now. 21 years uh, ago. Yeah, that, that happens. So, Golly, I tell you what, I mean, you, I met you about 12 or 13 years ago um, at a uh, Chamber of Commerce um, sort of, I don't know, like a, a business expo. Sure. Yeah. Chamber yeah, of yeah. Commerce Rolling Business Expo. expo. I remember those. That's yeah. right. And and I was so happy to meet you because you had been hired by my client's husband to wipe her computer. Okay. I remember. Uh, and and I remember you know, because yeah. he, he was mad at her or whatever, and he brought you a computer <laughs> and he wanted it wiped out, which would have like all her all her all her passwords and her family pictures and all of that because he was mad that they were getting a divorce. And uh, we had the best time talking about that. And then um, I hired you almost immediately, and you've been my IT person for the last 12 years, I think. Your time flies. It's really amazing. But yeah, those some of those cases are pretty interesting. I, I, can, I can tell you a few that would, would shock you uh, about people around the county. But yeah. It's interesting stuff. It really and is. I, no doubt. No doubt. So um, talk about the um, services that you do provide through your computer company. Well, you know, the, the biggest thing we do is, again, monthly retainer contracts for small businesses monthly plans that they can afford and that we come in and we are their IT person. No matter how much they use us, the plan's the same. Uh, we try to do consulting, sales, service of the existing equipment, the networking, the Wi-Fi, 
the websites, you know, webcams, speakers, audios, TV. If it's got a plug, we're going to do it. You know. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, and you can help, I mean, you, you, you can help people that are just working out of their house with their home office sure. set up. Sure. Right. And you can help big business. I know you've worked with Dwayne's and, yeah. and a lot of the bigger companies around. Yeah. We've had, we've had a lot of, you know, our, our sweet spot is probably the 25 to 30 employees, but we've got some that have 90 to hundred, you know, it's a, it's a varying range, but you're not too small. We, we got some people have been with us 20 years and they got three employees and, and that works for their business model and we're there to support them. Right. We treat them right. just like they're 300 people. So. Well, what is the, um, what is the number one mistake you see small businesses make when they call you to come in and help that you wish that they didn't make? I, th I think the, the most misunderstood part of a business on any level is file storage. People are not backing their files up correctly. They don't know where their files are saved. You go in the office and you're looking for something. Well, I did it in Microsoft Word. I did in Excel. Well, that's not really where the files stored at. So explaining that and giving an understanding and trying to educate the employees on how important it is to know. I mean, your, your computer's your filing cabinet. If you don't know where your files are, you're in big trouble. Right. And, right. Uh, and, and so much stuff is in the cloud. Now there's so many passwords and, you know, we all have that problem keeping up with those. That's a, that's a big challenge that I see. Uh, right. Now. Right. Yeah. Well, I know, I mean, you introduced, I mean, when I got with you, the cloud was, was sort of new and, sure. And and I'd never heard of Google Drive. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you know you got me set up with that. And man, that's been great uh, over the years as my business has grown. Because I'm yeah. not going to outgrow Google Drive ever. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, f famous last words of of someone a long time ago was, "I'm going to outgrow Google. This ain't going to happen." <laughs> no, right? Okay. So happen. we got Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. There's many clouds, and and they all have their plus and minuses. But it's important that you have a backup system in place. You just can't be on the local drive anymore. It's it's not wise. Right. Well, and it also, with so many people working from home sure. and stuff like that, I, you know, I have employees I all mean, over the was... place to, for everybody to be able yeah. to access those files from wherever they are. Yeah, well, it's like the, the, the cloud phones that we have, the ring central phones that we offer. When COVID happened, people could take them home. They could work remotely with Google Drive and the systems we set up. You could be here. You could be in Chicago. You could be down in Mexico. And you can work independently as part of that business. And so that is very important in today's environment. Well, and I still owe you a debt of gratitude. When, you know, when COVID happened, all I needed to transfer my entire law office from in-person to virtual with one week's notice was a single laptop. That's right. You got me one more laptop and we went virtual and didn't miss a beat. We had the VoIP phones from Ring Central. We were using Google Drive to back up the documents. Uh, everybody was able to have a laptop. We were able to have our meetings via Zoom. That's right. You helped me set up a Zoom account. That's I'd never heard of Zoom. And so, right. you know, and, and we're still able to largely work remote. We have employees, um, you know, that are, that are all remote. That's right. And, and, that's, and right. that's, and it, and it, and it's fairly seamless, um, through these products that, that Woody's Computing sells. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's, that's another big challenge right now is finding employees. I mean, I hear that. I, I talked to two this week that are asking me, Woody, have you heard of somebody for the front desk or somebody for here or there? And I know you've had to form out some of your uh, operations down in Mexico, right. but these technologies make that possible. And they allow us to find workers that are not just 25 miles from the business, Correct. but they can be 250 miles from the business. So we can gain the skill set that that business needs. It's very important. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah no, you're, you're absolutely right. Have family law questions? Need guidance to navigate legal challenges? The compassionate team at Breeden Law Office is here to help. Visit us at www.breedenfirm.com for practical advice, resources, or to book a consultation. Remember, when life gets messy, you don't have to face it alone. Um, and let's talk a little bit about your um, your time. You, you've been... A, a, a huge supporter of the Johns Community College. Sure. You've been on the JCC Foundation Board. Tell tell the the, the listeners about the the JCC JCC Foundation Board. What it does, what its what its goals are, how you've been involved with that. Because I think a lot of people may don't even realize that there is a foundation to provide scholarships to Johns Community College students. Well, you know, there, there's a lot of people that they they only associate the foundation with scholarships. And there's so much more that it's doing for facilities, 
you know, naming rights. When, when you name a room or a conference room and you donate that to the college, you're supporting scholarship. You're supporting uh, the, the education of the staff. I mean, the staff has to do continuing ed. People don't think about, is that going to come out of their pocket? Is the college paying for that? A lot of times, no. The foundation's supporting that. So the more of those non-scholarship funds we can raise to help with buildings and success, those things really add up to the FTE, which is where the college gets the money from the state. So that is a big piece of it. Right. And so the, the FTE is what you call a full-time equivalent, Correct. which is how the Johnson Community College is funded. Right. I, I was on the board of Johnson Community College from 2015 yes. to 2019. Right. You were on the foundation board even then. Sure. Um, and uh, I know we worked together a lot um, while, while we were doing that. And, um, you know, so, I mean, how much money does the foundation raise and give out every year? Do you know? Approximately? I know approximately there's about $16 million in there right now, but it's stock-based. So a lot of that fluctuates. Right. The stocks go up, it goes up and down. I think, you know, I had to be conservative. I would say probably 700000 okay a year. That's that's. But, you know, it's got to be self-perpetuating, right? You want to put that money in and let it grow and let it let it make money for the foundation. Right, the right. And well, that's so awesome. When you donate money to that, your money is, is helping people in perpetuity is, is the goal. Right. Well, and and I know they um, the foundation they they for a long time they had the uh, the Neil Lancaster yep. golf tournament, yep. and yep. they did that for twenty or twenty five years. I know that's gone away now, and they sort of replaced it with this casino night. Yes, yes. Uh, and I know you're the title sponsor of that. Tell people mm -hmm. about casino night. Well, casino night has took the the raffle that was part of the. Uh, the, the old golf tournament and we've added a casino function where we have a dinner, you buy your tickets for the raffle and then we have some some games of sort and we auction off prizes based on your winnings from those games. Right. So you, you could win a casino, you would win a trip to my condo, you could just, uh, win some jewelry yeah. from Evans Jewelers, you know, the places like that around town mm -hmm. that, that support the company. Well, I think this year I did really well. I, I, I won a facial, oh. I won some uh, <laughs> air filters, uh, a pillow, uh, a go. fall wreath. Uh, so I, I did pretty well with the raffle there. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't win the money. I just won some of the prizes. <laughs> I kept waiting for them to call my name for the for the for the five thousand dollars, but but that didn't um, did not that that. <laughs> that didn't happen. So I guess uh, you know you you being um, from here and, and being a business owner here, um, what do you love most about Johnston County? You know, I, I still like the, the small town atmosphere, which is certainly changing. You know, traffic's increasing. We're seeing a lot of people from north and south and all over coming here for job opportunities. But it's still, to me, it has that hometown feel. It's right. just a very positive place to raise kids. I think the school systems are great overall. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of opportunity here. Right. And so um, what um, I guess what has you excited about the future? whether it be your business, Johnson County in general, both? Well, you know, I, I, I think probably the, the thing that I look at when I'm looking at growth is where's the restaurants at? You know, right. I'm always looking for the food. I'm a big foodie. Uh, yeah, you know, I understand we like that. to go out and have a nice meal. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's uh, I'm looking for where's the restaurant at. And I think we're getting some more and, and there's more and more stuff coming. Certainly here at 4042, down at Flowers, we're seeing a lot of growth. Right. And uh, with 540, the new bypass coming, there's going to be, a lot more things come into this area. Well, uh, somebody told me yesterday that there's a mellow mushroom coming to flowers a mellow mushroom next coming. to Percy Flowers store. It is right kind of uh, maybe a block or two down from that across from Thales Academy. Okay. So, yeah, and yeah, sure. uh, I read that there's going to be an Outback Steakhouse in Clayton next to the Wells Fargo Bank on 70 Business. And right next to the Outback Steakhouse is going to be a Popeye's Chicken. I don't know if that's a foodie thing, but people okay, do like Popeyes. Popeyes. Uh, and Popeyes. of course, they're going to, as part of that same development, they're going to build, I think, a home to suites hotel hmm. right there. This will all be between what is the Fit for Life gym there mm -hmm. and Wells Fargo uh, going west into Raleigh on 70 yes. Business yeah, yeah. Uh, across from, uh, I guess that's the church. Yeah. Uh, the church is there and the McDonald's, you know, yeah. just down yeah. from the high school. So, for people that know, and that development is, is just getting started. I've heard lots of rumors as to what might be coming to the waterfront district at Flowers Plantation that, that Becky Flowers and, and them are doing. Um, I haven't heard anything confirmed. I don't want to use a rumor on a on a podcast, but uh, if, if any of the rumors are true, 
it's going to be these are big name raleigh triangle area restaurant owners coming to flowers plantation awesome. we already have crawford's crooks cook shop in downtown yeah. clayton yeah. um scott crawford and mannings and clayton steakhouse and downtown clayton are, are excellent one of my favorites the um out here at 4042 there's la piazza and there's simple twist mm -hmm. uh and I, I don't know of any new ones that we're getting uh per per se i, I think we're getting a uh, uh, out here, the, uh, there's a peach cobbler factory yeah, I've heard that. Uh, coming I've heard to, that. I've coming heard to that. the food line on Cleveland school road, I believe. So, so anyway, what are some of your other favorite restaurants? Well, I'm excited those, about the mellow mushroom. Well, the mellow mushroom is going to be big. Biscuit meals coming. Oh, okay. That's right beside my house almost. I mean, I oh man. Smell the biscuits when I wake okay. up in the morning. You know where I'm stopping at, man. So. Well, that's excellent. I, I know Biscuitville a couple of years ago during COVID came out here to 4042, and they're right there on Highway 42, and, and they do a booming business. Uh, and and uh, thinking about Biscuitville, I, I remember coming to Raleigh as a as a middle schooler in the mid 80s to go to NC State football game in 1986, and my my friend's grandfather lived in Raleigh, and he took us to a Biscuitville, and I thought it was one of the one of the first ones. And I thought this is the greatest thing ever made. It we didn't have Bojangles back then. No, no, I was no, like, Biscuitville no. was awesome, and that so was I was it. excited for forty forty two to get one. I'm excited for Clayton Southern to get staple. one. The Southern <laughs> staple, no doubt, no doubt. Well, that's great. So, if any of the listeners want to get in touch with you about what you can provide for their service, or any computer services you can provide or yeah. help them with, how do they do that? Well, check us out on our website, Woody'sComputing.com, or my phone number nine one nine seven nine five. 9106. All right, we'll do that and we'll make sure we try to have that in the show notes uh, for everybody that's listening to this. If you want to reach out to Woody, uh, feel, feel free to give us a five star review and some comments. Uh, thanking Woody for coming on and giving us some good advice about how your business can be more virtual and, 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 and more productive uh, with some basic tips that, that he gave us here today. If you enjoyed this podcast, uh, make sure you like, follow, or subscribe to it wherever you see this podcast, whether it be on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or you're coming to it through any of our social media postings uh, so that you'll be uh, made aware of future podcasts. They come out every week. Uh, we have a lot of interesting guests and community leaders and elected officials uh, that'll be coming on to come on in the weeks before and be coming on the weeks after. You don't want to miss that. If you love Johnson County as much as Woody and I love Johnson County, this is the podcast for you. Thanks for listening. That's the end of today's episode of Best of Johnston County, a show brought to you by the trusted team at Breeden Law Office. We thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to sharing more interesting facets of this community next week. Every story, every viewpoint adds another thread to the rich tapestry of Johnston County. If the legal aspects highlighted raise some questions, Help is just around the corner at www.breedenfirm.com.